So here on our Barfly events page, we have links down here at the bottom for add to calendar and join Zoom. Now there's all kinds of different calendars out there and I didn't wanna to have to list buttons or links for each one of them. So my idea was to put all of these inside of a dropdown. So now when you hover over the add to calendar button, it reveals a little tray that has all the different calendar links so the user can choose which calendar is appropriate for them. For me, this really saves on the UI so I don't have to list out each one of these calendars here, but it makes it quick and easy to access each one of them, and it's actually pretty simple to do inside Generate Blocks. Now this might not be something you need at this very second, but once you see it's possible and just how easy it is with Generate Blocks, I bet you're gonna find situations where an implementation like this would work perfectly. So if you're interested in seeing how it works, then stick around and let's get started. A huge thanks to today's sponsor, Dear Designer. If you excel at building websites, but struggle when it comes to design or just have too much work to handle, Dear Designer can help. Whether it's branding, web design, illustrations, print, or social media graphics, Dear Designer has a team of professional designers ready to take your project to the next level. Their monthly flat rate pricing makes having a professional designer on your team affordable, especially since you can put them on as many client projects as you'd like, or even have them work on your own agency's needs. We've had hundreds of members of the admin bar use Dear Designer and the feedback I've heard has been incredible, so much so that I've even used them myself when I've been overloaded. The process is simple, you get unlimited revisions, and I love that you can request the design files to make tweaks on your own. Best of all, it's all month to month so you're not locked into some never ending contract. Give Dear Designer a try by using the link down in the description and use our code TAB25 and get 10% off your first three months. Okay, so here inside Generate Blocks, all I've added is a section and a wrapper just for a place for our button to live. Now let's go ahead and add all the elements we're gonna need. The first thing we're gonna need here is a container. We'll go ahead and rename this just to make it really clear. And we're gonna call this our drop down wrapper. Now inside of this wrapper, we're gonna need our button for the drop down. So I'll just go ahead and add a button here and we'll put inside here, add to calendar, just to kind of make it match our demo. Now underneath this, we're gonna need another wrapper that's gonna hold all of the links inside of our dropdown. So I'll just go ahead and add another container here and we'll rename this. This is gonna be dropdown link wrapper. Now inside of that, we're gonna need all of the links that are gonna go in there. And I think it actually works best after a little bit of experimentation using buttons for all of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this button element here and we can add Google maybe to this first button. We'll duplicate that and here we can put Apple. We'll duplicate it again and in this one we'll put Outlook. Now with this, we have all the elements we're gonna need to create this. We just need to go back and do a little bit of styling. So I'll go ahead and click on our first link here and I'm gonna call this drop down hyphen link. We'll go ahead and hit create. And now we wanna move those block styles from the local block styles over to our class. So we'll go ahead and do that and press enter. Now I think I want the background of these buttons to be white. So we'll go ahead and change those to white and we'll go into our text here and change the text color to maybe this dark gray color. Now, when you hover over this, you can see it's turning dark blue. I think that works fine for this since we kind of already have this blue theme going. Now, the last thing I wanna do on this button is change the display from inline flex to just flex, which is gonna make this fill up the entire space here and put these all on individual rows, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and add that same class, the dropdown link class to our other buttons here. And we need to clear out those local block styles. So I'll go ahead and repeat that process again, clear out that style. And now we have all of our dropdown links set up. Now I'm gonna skip around here a bit because I wanna style this dropdown link wrapper last because when we change the height of it to zero to make it disappear, it's gonna go out of the UI and it makes it a little bit harder to work with. So we'll go ahead and start up here at this dropdown wrapper. So we'll go ahead and give this a class of drop down wrapper and hit create. We'll start with a blank style and I'm gonna go ahead and change this display to inline block just to make sure it doesn't take up all that extra space. I just want it to be as wide as the content inside of it and that fixes that problem. Although there's all kinds of different ways you could do that. Now I also want to set this position to relative. So I'll go down here to position and change that from default to relative. And that's all we need to do to that drop down wrapper for now. Next, we have our add to calendar button itself. The only thing I wanna to do to this is go to the settings panel and I wanna change this tag name from A to a button. And that's gonna by default put a border on it. So because we're gonna to have to make some style changes to this, I wanna go ahead and add a class as well. So I'm gonna call this our drop down button. 
we'll go ahead and hit create. And again, we wanna move those local block styles over to the class. And we can go in here to our borders and just zero this out so we don't have any kind of border around our button. Next, we'll move here to our drop-down link wrapper. Let's go ahead and give that a class of drop-down link wrapper. We'll hit create, and we'll start this one from scratch. Now, we're going to want a nice sliding in, sliding out effect. So I'm going to go here to our effects panel and change our transition. We'll put this at maybe 0.35 seconds, and we'll change the timing function to ease in out. So we're going to want to change this position from the default to absolute. We're gonna change the top value to 100% and the left to zero, which is just gonna make sure it positions it correctly when it opens and closes. You can see though that since I changed this to absolute, it changed the size of our buttons here. They're not spanning the full width of the button. Maybe you like that style for this, but for me, I want these buttons to stretch the entire width of our parent button up here. So I'm gonna go into our sizing and change that width to 100%, which will just make sure it stretches out the full width of our dropdown button. Now, because we changed these to flex, they're all left aligned. If you like that style, you can leave it just like that. However, if you wanted to go in into those drop-down links, you could center align them or do any kind of styling you need to. Now, in order to make this drop-down wrapper disappear, we wanna go ahead and change this height to zero pixels. Right now, it didn't change anything. Even though this container is zero pixels, the buttons inside of it are being allowed to overflow. So we need to go down here under position and change this overflow to clip on both the X and Y. And when we do that, you'll see our buttons all disappeared. Now they're not allowed to overflow their container, so we can't see them anymore. Of course, we wanna bring those back anytime we hover or focus on top of this dropdown button. So to do that, I wanna go ahead and copy this class to my clipboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight and copy that dropdown link wrapper class. And we're gonna go back down to our dropdown wrapper. We'll select that class. And inside of it, we're gonna create a new selector here. So we'll click on the more button and then click on new. Inside this new selector field, we're gonna go ahead and turn on our compound selector, and we're gonna type in colon is and open and close our parentheses. Now placing my cursor back in between those parentheses, we're gonna type in colon hover, comma, focus hyphen within. Now just after that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a space, and then I'm gonna paste in that class we had from our clipboard, the dropdown link wrapper. We can now see we're targeting this drop-down link wrapper whenever the drop-down wrapper is either hovered or anything within it is focused. And since we set that drop-down link wrapper to a zero height, all we need to do now is change this height to auto anytime we hover or focus inside of this wrapper. So we'll go ahead and hover over it, and now you can see the drop-down is working. Of course, our UI is kind of getting in the way here. If I select maybe our section instead, you can see this dropdown is working just the way we wanted it to, but let's go ahead and test it out here on the front end. So we'll go ahead and view this page on the front end. And now when I hover over it, you can see our dropdown is working just like we wanted. We're not getting our cursor there the way we want because I didn't put any links inside of these buttons. So we can always go back to these buttons and we'll just add a placeholder link inside of each one of them. And now if we save it, and refresh here on the front end, you can see all of these are clickable at this point. And if we go here to a mobile view inside of our inspector, now we don't have the benefit of this working on hover since we're on a touch device, but because we use focus within, if I click on this button, you can see the dropdown reveals itself and we're able to click on any of these links inside of it. So it works great on mobile as well. The only real question I have about this solution is the accessibility of it. If I turned on my screen reader and tabbed through this, it is going to announce the add to calendar and all the buttons within it, even when the dropdown is not opened up. Now we could go in here and set the tab index to minus one on this add to calendar button. That way it would never get focused with the screen reader as you're tabbing through, and it would focus on all these buttons inside of it. Of course, we could add alt text to all these to say, add to Google Calendar, add to Apple Calendar, add to Outlook Calendar, but we're not gonna be able to get around it navigating through each one of these one by one and announcing them. It all still functions and people using a screen reader will be able to get to all these links, but there's not gonna be a good way for them to skip over all these links. And that's where a JavaScript solution for this, where we can maybe add and remove a class when you click on the add to calendar button, might be a better choice when it comes to accessibility, especially if you have a really long list inside your dropdown. Now, if we just have three add to calendar links, I don't think it's the end of the world if somebody has to tab through all three, but I did wanna point that out as it is a consideration you'll have to make if you add this to your website. 
For me, the Add to Calendar links was a pretty obvious implementation, but I'd be curious to know what kind of other use cases you could find for a drop down button like this. If you would, leave a comment down below and give me some ideas of some other ways you could see implementing this. I'd just be curious to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.